Okay, lesson 37. The subject we discuss is actually the subject of lesson 40. Because lesson 40 is the last class, you get to practice this new exercise only once if we do it in lesson five. We do it in lesson 40, so we pulled it back. At least you get to experience this new exercise four times. Because it's a very special exercise. And it's your first mudra. The mudras are taught in the advanced course, second module, and you learn about 13 mudras. But this is kind of the, the icing on the cake for the basic course. Now first, we need to understand what mudra is. Anybody with interest in yoga has probably heard about mudra. And when you hear about mudra, you think, what do you think? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so what does, what does this mean? What does it mean? Or what, more importantly, what does it do? <laughs> what does it do? Nothing. It does nothing. What is mudra? Why the finger movements? if it doesn't do anything. Of course, it's symbolism. First of all, remember, ancient people, without the benefit of rational thought, through education, their way of functioning was based on symbolism. That is why all ancient books are written in symbolical language very difficult for us as modern human beings to understand. That's the reason also why it is so important to be properly initiated into yoga. Otherwise, all that remains is mystery and dogma. So what are the finger movements? Apart from symbolism, they are simply reminders Reminders that you also find among the ninjas. You know the ninjas from Japan, the warriors? There is a martial art that is called ninjutsu. Like jujitsu, you have ninjutsu. Then practitioners of ninjutsu, they have their own secret finger movements. Secret, they do it behind their hand. They shield it off. But attached to each of the finger movements is a value. Courage, honor, honesty, etc. The finger movement is only a reminder. Like a modern human being possibly would write it down in a notebook. Mudras are like that are reminders not of values, we have our yamas and niyamas. The ninja uses the finger movements to remind themselves of what we know as the yamas and the niyamas, the moral principles at the foundation of the, the ninjutsu, the, the art of being a ninja. So what is it all about? Of course, it's all about energy. So, when I asked what is mudra, Kisun very correctly just did this. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we think of. But what does it mean? And that's what lies behind it. That is important. 
I don't know what this one means, <laughs> maybe nothing, <laughs> but there is, a, there is a mudra that goes like this. What does it mean? This is about control of ego. How? Hand in front of your heart is a vow. You remember? Sincerity from Namaskar. So, because you need the other hand, you do it with one hand. One hand in front of your heart. You make a vow. The thumb is the biggest finger on your hand. So it represents solidity or control. The index finger, if you have read the handout, you know what the index finger means. What do you do with your index finger? You point at yourself when you talk about yourself. I did this or I did that. So you control your ego you vow to control your ego. Sitting like this for an hour in meditation, or a day, or a week, does not help you to control your ego. You understand that? Yes, and that is the point. It looks, it looks mysterious, maybe. Maybe you impress people who are ignorant about yoga by sitting like this, very holy. But it doesn't do anything. It's only a reminder. What really does something is you contemplating the concept of controlling your ego, which of course includes understanding ego. How does ego work? How does it, how does it work in my life, in my daily life? How do I act and react based on ego, driven by ego? What is the mechanism? So it's not that simple. It's not just a hand movement. It is actually doing something with heart and soul. Doing something, being involved in that doing. Again, we come back to the principle of doing things consciously. Practicing mindfulness. If you understand that, you can control energy with a thought. Mudra is a more powerful way, more direct way of controlling energy than pranayama is. That is why you start with pranayama to become familiar with the concept of energy and the control of it. Not only that, also to free up, to free the way for energy control by consciously driving energy, manipulating energy. With the pranayama, you take control of the energy circulation, speeding it up, increasing, decreasing, and also flushing through the energy channels to gradually purify them, clean them up, so that the capacity of the energy channels increases. Then mudra comes into play. Sampati mudra is a very extensive mudra. All other mudras are a lot simpler. Not less powerful, but simpler. Here you have to take five steps. While all, most other mudras accept one or two, most other mudras accept out of one step. There are mudras that there are mudras that supercharge Shakti energy, Kundalini, but there are also very powerful mudras that supercharge Shiva energy. A little bit more about Shiva energy when we discuss the new pranayama of today, because it's a typical 
um, Shiva Pranayama that you learned today. But we'll do that after Sambhavi Mudra. With Sambhavi Mudra, you have a very systematic approach to letting energy rise by directly stimulating the chakras from the bottom going upwards. Sambhavi Mudra can be called the stairways to heaven. Literally. Because you bring energy up in a rather efficient way, powerful way, it leads to energy going up to the crown chakra, which, you remember, is the condition of paradise or heaven. Stairways to heaven, because it's very systematic. What is important now, after almost completing this course in which we have laid the foundation, what is important now is that you understand that you are most powerful in everything that you do in life, starting with exercises, but extending into your daily life, in private life and professionally, you are most efficient and powerful in your daily life when you do things with full intention, with heart and soul. When you're not interested in something, when you're not enthusiastic about something, the way that you do it, if you have to do it, is half-hearted. Listen to that expression, half-hearted. Your heart is not in it, at least not completely. Those old expressions always hit the nail on the head. But if you put your full heart into something, when you're enthusiastic about something, happy to engage doing something, the result is just so much better than when you do it in a half-hearted way. And that is the only way to make the mudra work. If you just mechanically go through the steps that you learned today, the five steps for this mudra, it doesn't have much effect, it will have some effect, because you are concentrating on something, you are working on something. Just like in daily life activities, there will be some effect, but it will be half-hearted. The result of it will be so-so. But if you do it with your full intention, which means, first of all, you have to accept that this is actually possible. You have to believe that this can work. And then put your whole effort into it, your whole heart into it. It's almost like anticipating eating a delicious ice cream, your most favorite ice cream. Chocolate with whipped cream on top. That is the way you have to approach it. Anticipating doing something delicious, something you love to do. If you can approach it like that, this exercise is very, very powerful. That's not easy. It's a new way of life, because until now, we have always done what other people told us to do, regardless of whether we like it or not, regardless of whether we are enthusiastic about it or not. You do what your parents tell you to do, you do what your teachers tell you to do, and after graduation, you do what your boss tells you to do. Sometimes you may like it, because coincidentally it's something that you like to do, love to do. But in many cases we don't, we just go through the motions. Because that is how we are conditioned to function. When you are inspired, when you are enthusiastic, it automatically includes energy being on a higher level. When you are dispirited, 
when you are engaging, doing things you don't feel attracted to, you don't feel enthusiastic about, you don't feel inspired or passionate about, your energy drops like a rock. So we're going to play with energy. And the result is actually rather amazing. But, like last week, this is like homeopathic medicine. If you do it only once a week or once a month, there will be a small effect, but not so much. If, however, you do it almost every day or every day, you will see amazing results in a short time. And people who have done this before will immediately acknowledge like with pranayama, seeing the, the, the improvements with chronic diseases, um, you, you probably, all of you, from the beginning of this course up until now, have noticed differences, changes occurring. Some more than others. But the more you practice, the more of the homeopathic medicine that you take, the more regular that you take it, the more, the, the deeper the change, the more profound the effect of what you do. Good. Sambhavi Mudra. Okay, let's first have a look at how this is done. Symbolically. Anybody here who has ever learned Sambhavi Mudra? Never heard of Sambhavi Mudra? Okay. Symbolically it is described as you, you close your ears with your thumbs. You remember, you know the monkeys? <laughs> See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. It's a little bit like that. You close your ears with your thumbs. You close your eyes with your fingers. You close your nose with your middle fingers. The upper lip is covered with the ring fingers. And the pinkies cover the crease below the lower lip. <laughs> and then you feel very holy. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> but this, this is how people do it, actually. You think it works? No, of course not. It's symbolical. And when you see it's described extensively, in detail, it all starts making sense. The thumbs represent solidity. Index fingers, ego. The, the middle fingers, it's a little bit obscene. <laughs> Pride. The index, the ring fingers, when you marry, what do you do? You vow loyalty, and you put a thing, you put not a wooden ring, not a metal ring or aluminium ring, you put a gold or platinum ring. And there is a reason for that, I will explain. The pinkies represent artistic tendency. Now it still doesn't make sense, but let's have a look how it works. Muladhara chakra is at the bottom of the spine. That is the first, because we, we have a very systematic approach here, that is the first chakra that we stimulate. On the last page you see 
all the elements that are related to this. Muladhara is the earth element, color red, the sense, the Shnanadriya is uh, smell, and most important is how we stimulate Muladhara chakra. How do we do that? With a sense of pride. <laughs> now, what do you do when you put up your middle finger? Exactly, pride, haughtiness, arrogance. Only, like with holistic medicine, with, uh, uh, what's it called again? I forgot it again. Yeah, homeopath homeopathic medicine. You apply the medicine in a measured way, not like normal people do, because then it leads to violence, it leads to conflict, it leads to all kinds of undesirable effects. But pride, if ego is under control, is a healthy sentiment. It's a sentiment that gives you the feeling that you're able to do things that you otherwise are afraid to fail at, that you otherwise think you're unca incapable of doing. So pride is a healthy sentiment if it is applied in a measured way, like homeopathic medicine, like holistic medicine. So what do you do after the pranayama? You start with Sambhavi Mudra and you simply recall the emotion pride. If you find that difficult to do, try to remember a moment in your life that you succeeded in doing something that gave you an enormous sense of pride. That can be finishing a study and going through the graduation and obtaining your degree or your diploma. But it can be anything else. It can be starting a piece of uh, uh, art. If you are creative, you start a painting or, or, or some clay work, some statue or something you're kind of in doubt whether you can pull it off. But you start, and in the end the result is very nice, above, beyond your expectation. So you feel proud about that. You feel really good about that. So to instill pride, try to remember something, some experience in life where you had a sense of pride, where you were filled with a sense of pride. Everybody can find something like that. In the beginning, Sambhavi Mudra is a little bit superficial. You have to work. But when you repeat it a couple of times, it becomes second nature. It goes very smooth and, and you really don't have to think much. But in the beginning, you first you have to think, you have to find something that instills pride. So it's a little bit laborious in the beginning, but it soon becomes intuitive, it becomes smooth. So Muladhara, pride, haughtiness. Svadhisthana chakra, the, the chakra above Muladhara chakra, the second from the bottom. The element, the subtle element is water the color orange, the sense, Shnanadriya is taste, but most importantly, we stimulate Swadhisthana Chakra with a sense of artistry or beauty. It's the pinky, symbolically. I, um, I always use The flower dahlia. Do you know dahlia? 
But there are two kinds of dahlias. There are small dahlias, and there are big dahlias that are like lotus flowers. I'm talking about the big one. I once went to the garden center. It was a nice spring day, and I bought dahlias for my balcony. I had a house in Amsterdam with a balcony in the front and in the back. And I bought dahlias with the color of the cushion. It's the reason why I chose this color for the cushions. It's not a coincidence. It's not that they had only cushions in this color. I ordered this color in Tungde Moon. I had them handmade. Why? Because those dahlias, I put them in this, in this uh, box with soil and I looked at them and I had a very deep moment of, of beauty in a, in, a, in, a, in a flash of a moment I soaked up the essence of the flower the, the, the texture of, the, of all those petals the shades of we, in Holland we call this Bordeaux red Bordeaux is wine so you, in English, I think you call it indeed wine red. Right? Burgundy. Burgundy red? <laughs> so the, the, the shades of, of, of burgundy red. It was a moment of contemplation. The, the beauty, the symmetry that left such a deep impression in me that I always use that, that moment, that memory of that moment to stimulate Svadhisthana Chakra. But you can use anything for them. A whole bunch of flowers. Or a piece of art. It is the reason why governments subsidize art. It is to cultivate people. It is to cultivate the population. That is why going to a museum is often very cheap or free. Governments want the population to civilize, to, to be cultivated through energy control, indirectly, using art. You understand now why governments spend so much money on a yearly basis, subsidizing the art scene? People who do not understand think artists are just losers that don't contribute to society and just live off of the payments from the government. They often do, but they have a very... Governments know why they do that. They have a purpose with that. It's this. Flowers, you know that I'm from the Netherlands. Holland is a country of flowers. When I, when I worked in a health food shop, the, 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 the store, the organic shop, um, was located in a, in, a, in a shopping mall, and there was only one health food shop. There was only one butcher, one bakery, one supermarket, etc. But there were three flower stalls. <laughs> then, contrary to Korea, in Holland, flowers are relatively cheap. So almost everybody has a bunch of flowers in the living room. Once a week or so, people buy flowers. You would think it's a waste of money. Flowers also, almost always when we visit people, we bring a box of flowers, a, <laughs> a box of chocolate and a bunch of flowers. And especially when you have a conflict with somebody. You have a conflict with somebody, there's a lot of bad energy, bad blood, but you want to make it up. You want to apologize, you want, you want to solve the problem, just, just get all that bad blood out of the way. How do you do that? On your way, you pass by the flower stall and you buy a bunch of nice flowers which you keep behind your back. 
you ring the bell, knock the door, and when the door opens, you say, ta-da! <laughs> and, and then you apologize. The flowers melt the person's heart. It's impossible to remain angry. Of course, you then need to have a sensible conversation. It's not that easy. But the flowers are the icebreaker. Because of this, it really it touches you. It awakens an energy in you that otherwise doesn't awaken. So, beauty, sense of beauty, long story, but this is, if you understand this, you will change also probably the way that you arrange your house. You will have maybe less ornaments and things, but when you have something, it's something of beauty. Sense of beauty for Svadhisthana Chakra, then we have Manipura Chakra. Subtle element is fire color yellow, the Shnanadriya is vision, sense of ego. Ego is very easy. I just imagine walking down the street and somebody opening the window and saying, Hey, Ron! Ron! <laughs> you, Ron! That's it. Poof! Ego. Manipura Chakra. You don't believe me? Next time when somebody calls your name, try to consciously observe what happens with you when they do that. If you have children or you are a teacher, use this with your students, especially with children. Children sometimes, or not sometimes, very often, because they're so bubbly, so full of energy, they easily get distracted. You want their attention? Loudly call their name. Because they're so busy being distracted, joking around, fooling around, you call their name and immediately their spine straightens. Me, you're calling me. Ego. Of course I'm exaggerating, but it really works. That is why when you learn about uh, uh, higher management, when you are a manager working in a company, in the, the professional, you learn about calling people by their names. It's very important in doing business that you call people by their names. Why? Appeal to their ego. It's much easier doing business when you we call, we, in Dutch we say caressing people's ego. You have such an expression in English? Caressing people's ego? Yes, that is what you do, simply by using people's name. Within two weeks I knew all your names, remember? I make it a point to memorize your names. If after three, five, seven weeks doing this course, I still don't know your name, how do you feel? You will not admit it, but subconsciously you don't feel good about that. Powerful. Powerful tool. Anahata Chakra, the heart. Of course, it's faithfulness, loyalty. The ring finger. Why do we have a tradition that we don't even know how old it is? That when we commit ourselves to a partner in a relationship, why particularly do we put that ring on the left ring finger? And why is it always gold or platinum? 
precious metal and not just some material. It is believed that this left ring finger is connected to the heart. Not only that, precious metal is inherently sattvic. So with the sattvic metal around that finger, you stimulate the heart, which will enhance your sense of loyalty. It is symbolical on the surface, but on a subtle level, on the level of subtle energy, it has an effect, like homeopathic medicine. So we now live in a time where people rebelliously, going against convention, put their wedding ring on the right ring finger. But if you understand why it is on the left and not on the right, then it doesn't make sense to put it on the right. That's just a detail not so important. Sense of loyalty. How do you call up a sense of loyalty? You can indeed think of your partner, if you have a partner. But that's a little bit tricky. Because there's always many things involved in relationships. Not only all positive. There can be doubt, there can be conflict, there can be... You know there is a family attached to your partner. So there is, it's compli complicated, complex. But it's possible. If you love your partner very, very much, you're deeply in love with your partner. It's a very powerful tool. For me, and throughout the years it has proven to be, for me at least, to work, to be the correct thing, I've chosen always a sense of loyalty to the path that I chose to follow since I started practicing yoga and actually started to change, started to connect with my heart's content. Not been an easy road, there have been many obstacles and deviations, distractions, but it has always proven to be the right decision and the right direction. Loyalty to that, loyalty to yoga, if you want to call it like that. But it is much more complex. Yoga is life when it starts becoming conscious. For me, that works. If that doesn't work, sometimes it doesn't. It's loyalty to my dogs. In the past, I had another dog. Loyalty in the sense of, no matter what, I will take care of you until your last breath. It's impossible to imagine there are people who at some point when there is some challenge or obstacle in life just discard of their pet. Impossible to imagine how, how, how can, how is it, I, I would never be able to do that. But loyalty to a child, if you have children, that's probably a very powerful tool too. They need you, at least for the first 20, 30 years of their life. And it is up to you to determine whether they will end up good or bad. So loyalty to that. But you can see now eh, what we're talking about. If you just think about loyalty as a word, as a concept, it doesn't work. You have to really feel it. Like with ego, like with sense of beauty, like with pride. You have to actually create with your whole heart involved. The better you can do that, the stronger it is. The more powerful it works. 
The last one is Fishuddha or Fishuddhi Chakra, the throat. thumbs, solidity, sense of solidity, the subtle element is ether, color blue, hearing, remember you close hearing, if you look at the, at the graph, the, it's not a graph, but the, on the last page, the five Chakras, smell, eyesight, ego, you see that the, the fingers and the sense that they represent start making sense now. It starts becoming logical. Why symbolically you cover your ears with your thumbs, not with your index fingers, with your thumbs, etc. You start seeing that now. It doesn't work if you do this, but it works if you follow what it represents. Okay? Steadfastness, solidity, steadfastness. You see that. The editor of the text, I should have removed it, but I did, and I thought it was funny. <laughs> but in the fourth paragraph, he added my name in the text. Because yogis, I wrote down the remark that it is no surprise that people who practice yoga, practice yoga properly, generally become strong-willed. It is part of your development that you develop a stronger will than you had before. You become more stubborn. In the beginning of your development, very likely, at least in my case, and I know many students' case also, this development leads to increased conflict. <laughs> Neda is laughing. <laughs> She's been on this path a little bit longer, and Maya is also a little bit like <laughs> you become you you develop a put your foot down mentality. You become more stubborn, more strong-willed, more determined. So it is. If you go through all these steps, you naturally develop a sense of dignity. A sense of beauty, a sense of ego, but in a healthy way. Loyalty, all these qualities, characteristics, develop naturally in the yogi. But something that develops naturally is not as powerful as something that you call into being deliberately, consciously. So that is what we are now making use of. Steadfastness, solidity. How do I do this in practice? I connect it with the step before. My loyalty to the path that I have chosen. You say to yourself, I don't care what other people say. This is what I've chosen to do. And no matter what happens, no matter what other people think of it, I will continue to do it. It's my path, my choice. And I know where it is going. I know where it is leading. It won't be easy, it won't be fast, it will take a long time, but I will get there. That kind of steadfastness. And then you start losing your hair. <laughs> Just kidding. Then a long path starts full of challenges and obstacles, but every time you feel you're getting closer and closer to where you want to be. And it's a work of a lifetime. Okay?
questions about Sambhavi Mudra? No, at the beginning you said that actually not touching the... No, 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 don't. So what, what, what are you actually doing with your fingers? I'm not clear with that. You don't do nothing with your fingers. You don't do anything with your fingers. It's symbolism. It's like with pranayama. So it's literally just generating those minds. Yes, it's, oh. medi it's a meditation exercise. Oh. You start with pranayama, then sambhavi mudra, and the remainder of the time, concentration on nada. So your meditation from today onwards consists of three elements. Pranayama, reinforced, supercharged, by the mudra, Sambhavi mudra, and followed by concentration, meditation, contemplation. With the mudra, when you mentioned that the physical doesn't do anything, I feel like, like for just like with our physical yoga postures, whenever um, like if we go like this, it is a subtle energy. Energy change. I feel that when I go like this, that there's it, it has some subtle effect on like, energy circulation, like energy circuit. So maybe it's possible, but it can also be imagination. Mm -hmm. So apply the yamas and the niyamas. Truthfulness, purity. But if you really feel that, it's okay. Then it works for you. But remember, the idea behind it is more powerful. Yeah, so I'm like, is it because I'm doing this, or by doing this, I'm setting like an intention that it is going to circulate the energy? <laughs> Well, you know, imagination is very strong, so by imagining that something is happening, you can actually feel it. Yeah. That's possible. Okay. But then, do not lose sight of the actual goal of doing that. Right. Don't get attached to the surface. Yes. Let's also discuss the pranayama then. Let's start the recording.